Okay, once we have the derivative of the log available to us, there's a technique that we can use to find the derivative of a whole bunch of functions whose derivatives would be complicated to calculate otherwise. In particular, some examples, if we wanted to know what the derivative of x to the a, where a is any real number, we could use logarithmic differentiation, or if we wanted to know the derivative of a uh, slightly more complicated function x to the x, uh, it'll also work for that. So let me go through those two examples. And before, before I do, let me just emphasize what we've seen so far, and generally in a course when you get to the point of figuring out what the derivative of x to the a for a any real number, you may have already seen, and we have in our course, uh, what to do when there's a positive integer here or when there's a negative integer here. Both of those two we were able to do uh, the first one just from the definition of the derivative and the second one we used uh, another technique. You can actually do that using implicit differentiation uh, but um, I, I think we did it a different way. I'm not remembering right now. Okay, so um, so this is something different, right? This is not an integer power. I could put pi up here, and so far we can't apply that power rule function to x to the pi. It only works for x squared, x cubed, x to the minus two, x to the minus seven, and so on. So once we've done this logarithmic trick, we'll be able to use the, the whatever rule we find, which will turn out to look exactly like the power rule. It is the power rule, but it's just we have to prove that the power rule really does work for all functions of the form x to the a, where x is a real number. Okay, so how does this logarithmic differentiation work? So the trick is to take the log of the function, and here I apparently flip-flop between log and ln, but I just want to remind you, in a typical math course, um, math professors, instructors, will usually use log or ln for base e, and tend not to use log for base 10. Um, so always good to double check that, but okay, here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the natural log of both sides of the function that we're trying to find a derivative for. And the reason this is useful in this case is because that a which was causing us trouble because we didn't know how to deal with it in the same way we know how to deal with x to the n where n is an integer will now because of log rules come down in front so i have a natural log of x okay so on the left hand side we, we have something whose derivative i already have figured out how to calculate and on the left hand side we have a composition right we're plugging the f of x function into the log of x so when I take a derivative of both sides, what I end up with is one over the argument of log. But because that argument is not just x, it's f of x, I have to multiply by f prime of x. And on the other side, I have a times derivative of log x. Here I do just have x plugged in, so it's just one over x. Now I can isolate and find the derivative of x to the a and it is a times 1 over x times f of x, which I can go back to the definition of x of x, that's x to the a, which does not quite look like the power rule yet, but when I realize that I have x as a base on the top and the bottom, I can take the difference of their powers, and I end up with a times x to the a minus 1. And that is exactly the power rule that we've seen for integer powers. So yeah, it works for real numbers, and we just needed to get to the point where we could use this logarithmic trick to show that x to the a, what do you do? You bring the power down by one and put the power, the original power as a coefficient out in front. Okay, so what about that g of x? Let's just run through this method. Eh, I'm gonna mix this up and I'm gonna use log notation. And again, remember that's base e, even though I'm you might be used to seeing it as base 10 in other contexts, in particular in a computer science course or maybe in high school. So here I'm going to have an x to the x. I'm taking the log of g, and I am... Oh, whoops. Let me put g of x in there. So I have a g prime that will eventually come out. So I put the log of g of x here. I take log of both sides of that expression up top here, this one here. 
and I get log of g of x is equal to log of x to the x, and the power can come down. Now it's a, a, a variable, but it doesn't matter. Still, it can come down in front x log x. And now when I take the derivative on the left-hand side with respect to x, I get 1 over the argument of the log. Chain rule tells me I have to multiply by a g prime. And on the right-hand side, I have a product rule. So I have a derivative of x is 1, so I have log x. And then add to that, leave the x alone and take a derivative of the log x, I get 1 over x. And so this will cancel and give me one, but uh, let's just write it all out here. So g prime of x is equal to, now this is gonna be g of x times the log of x plus, and now x times one over x is just one, so when I multiply through by the g of x, I just get a g of x. And so what this ends up being is x to the x log of x plus x to the x. And you can factor out an x to the x. You get x to the x. It's not critical to do this, but I only want to move it so I have a little bit more space before I hit the line. Log x plus 1. And the log is not of the plus 1. It's just of the x. Okay, so that is the derivative of uh, x to the x, which is slightly more complicated. I mean, you may have, uh, if you if you had tried to guess what the derivative would look like, maybe you would be tempted to take a power rule. Maybe you would be tempted to treat it as an exponential because it's like a to the x. It's also like x to the a, but it's x to the x. And that's why its derivative ends up looking very different. Okay, so that is how we use logarithms to calculate derivatives of certain functions, especially when there is something like this a that is causing trouble or this x that's causing trouble and you might want to put it into a new form where the derivative is more straightforward to calculate.